Welcome to the Team Real World radio show on 107.3 FM. WBRP. My name is Maurice Velasquez. I'm John Shirk. And we are Team Team Real Real World. World. This radio show is where we discuss all things business, management, leadership, and team dynamics. You know, we need to add one to that, John. I cannot believe that we don't have that as one of our tags. Sales. Oh, that's true. I mean, you, Very you, true. You, you realize how much sales training we do. We oh, do almost thirty percent, forty percent. Yeah, I mean, it's it's high. Yeah, our our flagship product, if you would, is um is management and leadership, right? Which of course has a direct impact on team dynamics. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, so we spend a, most of our time doing. Of course, we always do a good 10, 15 percent on on uh, on computer training. Yeah. But the the vast majority of the the rest of what we do is working with sales managers, sales teams. And getting that revenue up. That's right. So uh, uh, that's what we do. That's what we do on the show. We talk about all things having to do with helping you build a real world team. And by what we mean by a real world, it's it's just that. Yep. Is helping you uh, resolve real problems with real solutions and we try to make it make it really fun really fun that's right so uh, what's the point if it's not going to be fun <laughs> it yeah it, well it, yeah it, it, it it's hard it's really yeah. difficult as a matter of fact we're going to talk a lot about that yeah, today you you train me to say that you know <laughs> i mean not not just to verbalize it but to believe it right you know? right and it, we're gonna we're gonna spend a whole lot of time actually really the whole session today the whole the whole radio show today this is going to be part one of two shows in which we are going to talk about what it means to be an excellent manager, okay? And what does it mean for you to impact your culture, your your workplace culture, to make it a thriving workplace culture so that productivity is enhanced and people just are looking forward to working there. Yeah, nothing's worse than going to work and sitting on either side of someone who clearly they just – it looks like they had too much buttermilk and onions last yeah, night. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So a couple things. You can find us on our website at www.teamrealworld.com, and our number is phone number is 225-772-4357. You can also find us on Facebook. Uh, just simply go to Facebook and type in Team Real World. Send us any uh, post or shoot us an email. Uh, as a matter of fact, let us give you our emails. Our emails, the best place to reach us at is info at Team Real World. All right. Yep. Uh, all right. So, well, let's get started. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we usually always start with first, what's the problem? What's the challenge? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so whenever somebody asks me, hey, Maurice, what, what do you do for a living? Okay. And I, I usually answer this way. Okay. Um, you know, that thing at work that makes you very frustrated about, uh, you know, you can't really touch it. It's really difficult mm-hmm. to, to pinpoint, but there's lack of communication or things just take long. They take forever. Yeah. It, you know? doesn't, it isn't really the work itself, sort of. It isn't the, it isn't the, you know, if you're an engineer, it isn't running the numbers. No. It's not that part of it's, it. It's the part that makes you have to work with people. Right. You know, or getting your boss's attention or your boss delays things or yeah. your boss moves too fast or th- things just constantly change. Yeah. And when they're not changing, uh, People have no idea what, what happened to that. I, I, I heard a, a, a real story here recently that someone came to me and they said that they were at work and HR called them and said, you have to come to this training on how to do performance reviews. And they said, why? Why? And they said, well, you've been promoted. <laughs> and she said, what are you talking about? I didn't ask for a vote. Oh, I don't know. We even know what's going on. Surprise, and they said, they said, oh, yeah, it happened two weeks ago. Oh. <laughs> oh, you know the the old the old military uh, mantra of tell them what you tell them where you are tell them where you were tell them where you're going right that seems to be the opposite of most management's approach yeah. let's keep them in the dark let's surprise <laughs> them and let's wonder why they're not engaged when we tell them at the last minute the brand new news that's right either you're fired or you're gone or, yeah. or you're you know or, or you've yeah. been promoted that's right uh so the whole issue of management, how in the world does, do, do managers create a, a, a different culture? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what that's what this is all about. That's what we're about. Yeah. How do you create a, a better culture where team members are fully engaged? Right. People, you know what this looks like when you've seen it. It's people are, have a smile on their face. They're whistling while they work. There's a, there's a sense of real connection to what their competency is and that they're delivering it on the job and they feel... Not just happiness about people, but 
they feel a satisfaction in delivering what they can do, and they have a sense of identity in it. Right, right. All of that. Yeah, all of that. Um, and it starts from the first day, you yeah. know, from uh, from all the way from the beginning to the end. Yeah. Uh, and let's throw out some 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 several things that our listeners can be can appreciate a little bit of what what our program, what our management program addresses. Uh, reviews only happen once a year. Right. You know, if that much. I, I have another good story here with this one. <laughs> Go ahead. Go Somebody ahead. told me this is a very a, a very highly skilled person. This is not like your typical kind of entry level person. A highly skilled person told me that he and and fairly up there in, in pay scale said he waited three years oh. for a review and after his review was given a forty eight cent pay raise. Oh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know what's worse. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna give me a tip, you yeah. know, if, you, if you're gonna leave a bat, if you're gonna leave a tip over for ten cents, you might as well not give me a tip. I know. You know? I thought it's so specific. It wasn't fifty cents. It was forty-eight cents. <laughs> it was probably at the bottom yeah. of some spreadsheet. That's probably you know? yeah. Uh, some na- national <laughs> na- na- national comparison of of, right. of own net title or something. You're right. <laughs> so uh, so man, I so managers, uh, do they have an impact on this? Of course they oh, do. Absolutely. You know. Uh, but but we regularly see just uh, lots of signs and symptoms of managers just not able to build that camaraderie, to build that team. And it is very much about being able to build a team, bring it on the new people, uh, and knowing how to inherit old people. Yeah. Okay. Being able to put the right people on the right, uh, you know, uh, on the bus. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it also boils down to some very practical things. Like we talked about reviews. Yeah. Okay. Uh, managers should not wait one year to, 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 to review their people. It should Absolutely. be more often, but yeah. what about the tools, the tools people's need, oh, you know, man. how many times do, do, do people just don't have enough tools? First right. of all, they get there and a week later, they're still, their computer's still not up and running. Right. First of all, the computer may not be on their desk. Uh, yeah. they, you know? they've heard they have an email address, but no one knows what the password is. Right. Or you can tell there's favoritism. Yeah. There, there's favoritism going on, you know, and, and you know that, uh, one person's expected high quality. The other person is that it doesn't take long for the, for the new blood. Mm-hmm. Okay. For people who come in to your company to pretty much identify and let you know, or, or they, they, they probably don't even let you know. Yeah. They just kind of just pick up on the fact yeah. that, okay, there's some serious fairy. Right there, on. right there is where that disengagement. Happens. Oh yeah. Right absolutely. there where that top absolutely. layer of productivity just yeah. sort of vanishes. Yeah. And so, you know, how much, how much is this, John, how much how much would you say this is costing companies? Okay, oh, how much is this co- billions costing? Billions of dollars, huh? Billions, B- uh, absolutely. Billions? No question. No billions. question. I have, we no have question. A, we have a little video, a, l- a little a little sound recorder. Okay, a little uh, a sound clip of of a study that was done not too long ago explaining the tremendous impact that bad managers have on companies and the economy as a whole. Do we have that clip ready? All right, let's take a listen to it the most stressful part of their job. 44% say they've been verbally, emotionally, or physically abused by a supervisor or boss at some point in their career. And 31% of workers say their boss just doesn't appreciate them. Sounds like a big group of whiners, doesn't it? Actually, employees with subpar management have the right to complain. And this dissatisfaction is costing businesses and the American economy big money. The economy. Bad working relationships between management and employees cost the economy $360 billion each year from lost productivity. Fake sick days dawdling because of low motivation and purposefully making mistakes out of spite are all direct results of a bad boss, and it costs the economy big bucks. Health is at stake. Anyone who's ever had a bad boss knows they can't just shake them off when they turn in their two weeks notice. In fact, it takes people 22 months to restore their stress levels to a healthy range after a bout of terrible boss. Also, people who are stuck working for someone horrible are more susceptible to chronic stress, depression, and anxiety, which all increase the risk of a lowered immune system, colds, strokes, and even heart attacks. All those sick days and visits to the doctor, acupuncturist, massage therapist, and psychologist are costing companies a pretty penny in health costs and lost work days. Last but not least, a bad boss produces some very real costs in the form of recruitment costs, lost productivity during new hire training, and in cases that escalate, legal fees. One organization who did the math on real money lost in a year because of one boss's bad repertoire with employees added up to a whopping $160,000, well above the average managerial salary in many industries. Wow. There's some big numbers. Did you hear all that? Yeah. Managers are causing chronic stress. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm telling you, this is bad. It is. It's really bad. I mean, yeah. there's a whole there's a whole movie out there. It's a bad movie called Bad Bosses. Yeah. But everybody yeah. knows, of course, that was the extreme yeah. you know, of, yeah. of, of foolishness. <laughs> but the funny thing is you talk to people about it and you go, well, my boss was not that bad. But, man, my boss is horrible. Yeah. My, my manager's terrible. Yep. All right. So if, if this wasn't bad enough, all right, we have an additional challenge, and that is that you now have a multi-generational crowd that are hard to get engaged. We will cover that on the back end of this thing. That's right. Man, this is tough. <laughs> this <laughs> is what we go. do. Lots of lots to it. That's right. All right so uh, we'll be right back. You've been listening to Team Reworld on Talk 107.3 FM. WBRP. Welcome back to the Team Real World Radio Show, where we discuss real problems with real solutions, and we make it really fun. Really fun. All right. You're listening to Team Real World on 107.3 FM. WBRP. All right. And we're discussing how in the world do we become excellent managers. Yes. And the impact that that has in order to help our teams become more effective and in order to make our team workplace more thriving. Can I can I tell you a quick stat I heard just Absolutely. earlier? Actually, I heard this one earlier today from a client who was very proud of one of their managers. Yep. He said that their um, they had a unit, a business unit, they were struggling to to have break even. They introduced a new manager to that business unit, and he has taken them from barely breaking even to running at sixty six percent gross profit margin on that wow. product. Wow. Pure, no change other than the manager. Other than the manager. Other than the manager. And so, what? 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 Have you? What? What are the contributions to it? What? What made the difference? Well, essentially, they this person came in with a mindset of a manager, saying, "I'm not here to ask permission to be the manager. Mm-hmm. They made me the manager for a reason, so right. I'm going to manage." And he just surveyed what he was looking at, identified all of the inefficiencies, clarified roles gave definition to people's work, Mm -hmm. said, we're going to do this, we're going to follow this process, and required compliance to that. And by doing that, he just made a whole bunch of money for the company. So the the company hired someone that knew how to manage. Right. Okay. That is often where the problems are. Yeah. That you promote somebody from within Mm -hmm. because they're good at what they do. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And they have all good intentions. The company has good intentions. The person who's being promoted has good intentions. But beca- being a good sales rep does not mean you're a good sales manager. Correct. Being a good engineer does not mean you're a good manager of engineers. In fact, not only not only is that the case, some of the instincts that make you really good at a more frontline position, like a sales rep, right. work against you. They're actually counterproductive to, for example, say to your manager, I'll do anything you want me to do. I you just, want me to come in on Saturday and move furniture for free? I'm there. That's more of a frontline approach. Exactly. But if you're a manager and you say that to an executive, right. everything freezes up. They expect the manager to propose what to do. Right. I, I think managers, uh, they get themselves stuck in a catch-22. They they want to manage. Oftentimes, they may or may not know how to, but they look to their supervisors above them, their executives. Yeah and say, I can only really provide clarity once the executives provide me clarity. Exactly, exactly. And I would lead my teams better if my people listen to me better. Yeah. Okay? So they put themselves, they should be in the middle, but they put themselves in a position to where it's almost a position of victims. Yeah. Uh, not realizing that the very reason why they were hired is, well, what is their title? It's to manage. Exactly. So managing something means that the company, the people above you, the executives, and your people, they're looking you to be the, for, to you to be the one who actually manages, the one who gets in the front and organizes this, sets up clarity as to how we're going to talk, how we're going to make decisions, how we're going to execute things, and how we're going to measure ourselves on a regular basis. Exactly. I can't tell you how many managers that we bump into in trainings who they're not experienced as managers and they have a certain mindset of futility in their work because they say, well, the executives won't let me manage. 
But when you go to those companies, you talk to the executives, they say, as soon as they're actually going to be managers, I'll let them. Right. And so this this impasse happens. And what's really stuck is that this manager with a mindset that says, I can't really do anything unless someone lets me do it. Correct. Yeah. And so what we've done in our program and the way that we approach it, we take uh, is a five step approach. I think we could even call it five taps. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. There, there's five steps. Yeah. Five. Uh, a tap dance. A tap dance. That's good. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You just created a new name for it. Okay. It's, it's a good tap dance. Okay. But it's it's five critical steps that if managers used on a regular basis, okay, because the whole thing works if it's a rhythm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's like a tap dance. Yeah. You don't just go through the motions one time and they go, that's it. No, yeah. <laughs> you have to do it over and over to create a dance. That's right. Okay. And so the, the five steps that would help managers become excellent is to consistently do these five things. Okay. So for the, for the re- remainder of this show and the next show, we're going to expound on these five things. So here they are. Okay. The first tap is being able to tap into your team. Yes. Okay. You have to be able to tap down. And these are the people who the, work for that's you. That's right. You got to be able to tap into your people. Yep. All right. We're going to talk in much more detail what all that means. But step number one is being able to tap down to your people. All right. Yep. Number two, you have to tap into yourself. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You have to tap into your organizational style, how you organize yourself and prioritizing. Okay, Mm -hmm. you can't be like staff members that show up at work on Monday and go, what are we going to do this week? (laughs) You just can't. Well, and I'll say to this as well. A common misunderstanding is the assumption that the most organized person in the building should be the executive. Right. No, that is not the case. Actually, it works the other way around. Sometimes the most disorganized person should be the executives. Yeah. Because they're the ones who are thinking at the eighth floor level who should be blue skying. Yeah. And you they can't have the same mentality as being the organizers. Now they right. should expect to be organized, but they're not the ones doing the organizing. Correct. The managers in the middle. So let, let's just pause for a second. We've mentioned five two of the five, okay? We have to, managers have to tap into their people. We often call it tap down. Mm -hmm. Tap down into people. What is it that we're looking for? Okay, when we tap down. Well, we're looking for problems. Right. Ideas. Sure. Solutions. Yep. Recommendations, whatever. You know, it's it's being able to tap in and listen. Our standard three questions are, what should we start doing? What should we stop doing? And what should we keep doing? There is a power in being able to just leave it that soft. Oh, heck yeah. You know? So first step, tap down, tap in, tap down to your people. Number two, Mm -hmm. tap into yourself. Yes. Okay. If you have gathered, if you have tapped down and you've gotten some feedback from your people, that in and of itself is a challenge, which we'll discover in more detail. Mm -hmm. But once you've gotten a feel of the land, okay, Mm -hmm. well- do you take regular regular time to prioritize prioritize yourself to determine what things I need to delegate down? What yep. things do I need to go talk to my peers about? Mm-hmm. What things do I need to escalate up? And what things do I just need to say? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so that second step is crucial. Yep. It's crucial. One, uh, a, a company that I, that I went to work for as a, as a field of operations, uh, the executive, actually, when they hired me, the executive team basically said, look, for the first three months, we need you to go and basically get it, the feel for the, the, the feel for the land. Mm-hmm. Okay, go and figure out what it, what you believe are the major things that we need to do and propose, okay, a game plan. Wow. <laughs> I'm I mean, my first week there, I had no idea. Uh-huh. I only had you know, you think, "Oh, 3 months." Yeah. Oh, no, that's not a whole lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh and so it's like, "Okay, where do I start? What if I get it wrong?" Mm-hmm. Well, you have to immediately go and tap into a lot of people yeah. and then put together something. They didn't wait three months. <laughs> a week and a half later, they're going, so how's it going? Yeah, what do you got, what do you got coming? What's, what's, going, you got, what's going, the, going on? Yeah. Preview. But that's a good, a, a good example of tapping down, mm-hmm. tapping into yourself. Then what's the next step? Now, here's where a lot of people, especially you out there listening, you're probably saying, all right, the next step would be how to tap up how to go up and propose to your executives or, you know, uh, bring, go, go up to the top and align with the top. Nope. That's step number four. Step number three 
is tap across to the peers. If you're the director of marketing, okay, then you are probably, I'm just going to say probably, generally speaking, probably not doing yourself a lot of uh, benefit if you don't, on a regular basis, talk to the Department of Sales. Yes. Okay, and sales is probably not doing a good job if they're not in some way talking to engineering. Oh, or yeah. engineering is not talking to customer service. Yep. Customer service is not talking to the other departments. You know, there's there's a group of managers right there in the middle that, boy, if they just talk to each other. Yeah. Okay, so the key, the third step is tapping across to those managers. This is huge. This the, is huge. Of, of everything that we're talking about, y'all, this tapping across is the single most powerful element of building a thriving culture. OK, mm -hmm. it's when a team members in one department know that the other department is doing stuff they shouldn't be doing because it's impacting us. And all we have to do is go tell our manager and our manager will find a way because they have a good relationship to go talk to that other manager and come up with a solution. Sure. Absolutely. That is powerful. Absolutely. Now, that'll motivate people to go, hey, we can have some impact around here. Yeah. All I have to do is speak up. Yes. That's yeah. powerful. It is. It's very powerful. That's powerful. So we're at, we're at step three on the way back, uh, on the back of the break. We will continue to step four, step five, and then we're going to extrapolate, extend what it means for each one of these steps to be properly applied. All right. This is fun, man. Yeah. Um, come back to us after the break. You're listening to Team Real World on Talk 107.3 FM. WBRP. Welcome back to Team Real World. This is the Team Real World Radio Show on Talk 107.3 FM. WBRP. All right. I love that song. Yeah? Yeah, but there's a reason why <laughs> we choose it other than just it's a, it's, a, it's a good song. All right? It's because in management, in companies, this is so often the case. Yes, it is. You go to meeting. And you come out of the meeting and said, hey, we said yes. And somebody's thinking, I don't think so. Not me. I Not didn't me. say yes. I, I didn't speak up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, or marketing department says, we're going to do this. And sales says, no, we're not. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to get a clip of that. We did this last show. We came up with this. And poor production guys going, I got to get that clip. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, but oh, I, okay. If you guys could see us, John and I are just holding uh, our heads, going, "My goodness, <laughs> we see this all the time." Thankfully, of course, this never happens at Team World because yeah. we're inoculated <laughs> to all these things. That's right. We have found that if we just simply preach it to everybody, it magically comes together of course, for yourself. We are like the Holy Grail. That's right. Team. That's why we do not allow our team members at the office to listen <laughs> to our radio show. <laughs> 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 because they would be sitting there saying, oh, yeah. oh doctors, That's heal right. thyself. They'd be out in front of the recording studio with the protest signs <laughs> and a right. banner and a theme yes, song. Yes, so uh, <laughs> uh, we need to put a legal disclaimer in here That's somewhere. Right. This cannot be used against That's our right. employees. <laughs> <laughs> we are not. Oh, unruly. this is, y'all, this is hard uh, stuff. It's it is hard. hard stuff. It is hard. Becoming a great manager, finding a great manager, supporting a great manager, having your manager then turn that around and support 15 people, 20 people, 30 people to then get along with another department. Yeah. You know, that. Well, what, what adds to it is that it is in the nature of, mo of the way businesses are structured in the Western world. There is a natural conflict that forms because yes. sales wants to close a deal and they're going to make certain commitments and promises to a prospect that operations has to deliver. And so operations is going to want to say, hey, you got to check with me before you commit to that. And there's like a natural, and then accounting exactly. is in the other side of the office going, hey, you guys going to include me in this conversation at some and, point? And they know they're not. It's always going to, right. and everybody pretty much feels like, hey, don't you for, don't forget about me. Right. Um, so I think it's safe to say that the problem comes down to not so much that people and departments are working as silos. Okay, 
because we need more departments to work as silos. Yeah. Oftentimes, people aren't minding their own business. You right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? I'm so sorry. To yeah, it's true. You know, it's true. Uh, I, I, we need to get a little poster here. So remember, you're on the radio, okay? <laughs> so don't don't speak your mind. Stick to the script, okay? Uh, <laughs> this isn't live, is it? Yeah. Okay. It is when it's it's That's being played. Right. When it's, yeah, when right it's now being, it is. <laughs> all right. So uh, it, the problem is not that your company or your team is working as silos, because in order for the car to work, okay. The each each piston needs to work on its own. So each department needs to have a vertical alignment within itself. Correct. It needs to work as a well-functioning team. Yep. Okay. However, the problem is that each individual team is wanting to operate alone. Right. And almost as if their unit is the whole company. It is. So instead of having a well-oiled machine that has six pistons that are connected by a shaft that keep this thing running, okay, mm-hmm. then then without that shaft that keeps that keeps a rhythm going, then each department's going to do their own thing, and then it right. becomes a push and shove. Exactly. At that point, everyone's going to appeal to the top, appeal to the bottom, appeal to the side, without there being a rhythm of decision-making. Cool. All right, that's where usually the pain of executives is exists, and that's where staff members can see that oh, this is just being run like a circus. Yeah, you know, uh, you know. Well, no, circuses are good chaos. So, yeah. uh, let, this <laughs> is being run. Let's, let's, let's yeah. change the analogy. This is being run like most companies. Yeah. So the number one, we would say the the, the number one habit that managers need to develop. Here, you listen to this, staff members and those of you that are not managers or and, and, and owners. This is what your managers need to work on is how to be able to cross those walls of silo Mm -hmm. and build good trust filled trusting relationships with each other if you have 10 middle managers those 10 middle managers have to be able to cross those walls and have good relationships as individuals and as a team ask yourself do those middle managers ever come together in a meeting where they have a good, effective, functional, productive meeting without having to have an executive in the room to keep them under control? There you go. Good question. <sighs> good question. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I mean, think about it. How many de- how many departments have good meetings among their own departments? Yeah. Right. Pretty good. Yeah. How yeah. many times do the executives talk to the managers? Pretty good. Some. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay. But how many times do managers talk to managers? Right. Well, if they're not tapping across to each other they're not going to be able to tap well effectively up, which is the fourth step. Right. And the reason being is because one manager is going up to the executives and saying, we need to do this. Right. And then when the executive says, yeah, let's go ahead and try that. Yeah, but then nobody check with the other department. Right. And then the other department says, no, we, we can't do this, that whole yes or no Beatles song. Yep. Then the executives are like, oh. Hey, as soon as you guys get your act together, you let me know. Exactly. So wait a minute. You gave me a proposal and you've never gone and talked to engineering about this. Right. Why haven't you talked to engineer? Well, and then, you know how they are. And you know how they are. Okay, so what you're really asking the executives is you're proposing this to me so that I go sell it. Right. So I have to go and be the one that sells it. Wait a minute. Wait, time out. This is where managers cease to become leaders. Right. So the third step, let's review them again. Step okay. number one is tapping down to your people, the needs, yes. the ones, the desires, the problems, the issues, and the ideas, right? Right. Then you have to tap into yourself, your style, your organizational development, your how good are you at time management, prioritizing, and coming up with a regular ongoing plan, yes. right? Step, tap number three, tap across. What that should look like is a weekly or bi-weekly meeting of those middle managers in a well-organized rhythm of decision making across the company, and they should be topics should include things that cover all the business. Yeah, it's not, not it's not vertical, it's right. not silos. It's, yeah, it's if you've got that issues cur- that are purely sales and only sales, they go to a sales meeting. If you're dealing with operations and only operations, it's only operations. Exactly. When you're dealing with these cross departmental issues, that's when that those are the topics to discuss. Managers, any manager, any manager of you out there that is hoping longing, wanting to know how to grow in your company and possibly move up the change of influence or even your career change, okay, and possibly step into that role mysteriously called chief operating officer, <laughs> okay, then this is your moment. This, this is, this is yep. when you realize, wait a minute, if none of the managers are organizing this, 
well, why don't I try to take the lead in bringing some type of level of organization amongst these team members, these team leaders, and get ourselves organized? Yeah. The four-letter word that starts with an F that keeps everybody away from doing this is not the word you're thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> okay? It is the F word. Fear. Ah, uh, yeah. Fear. There you go. Oh, nothing kills managers more than fear. Yep. Fear of whatever. Blank. Fear. And so they don't tap down. They don't tap to themselves. They don't tap across. They don't tap across. And they grow frustrated because they know if they could just sit down with somebody and persuade them and influence them, man, I could change the direction of this company because I know I have good ideas. Yep. And it's probably true of every single one of those managers. Oh, can I break this down even more? Absolutely. So here's when when a human being experiences fear, certain chemicals, certain Uh. hormones move through their body. And we have the, that response. You know what the, what I'm talking about here? It's the fight or, or flight, flight response. Right, right. Well, here's the deal. When you're going to be a competent manager, a professional manager, the very beginning point of that is the ability to be an emotional adult. Right, and right. When you're an emotional adult, what that means is that when that fear feeling comes up, you're able to maintain an assertive stance that doesn't fall too far into aggression, the fight, the fight, or too far into passivity, which is the flight. That's right. So if you know that you have to bring up an issue across across the room, across the floor, to another department, you have to realize if I go to fight, this is the aggressive. Yep. If I go to flight, it's the which one? It's passive. It's passive. Well, you have to. That's when you tap into yourself and go, okay, I can't do this. I can't. Those are not my only two options. Right. My key option is right there in the middle, which is what? Assertiveness. Assertiveness. But I'm going to assert myself not to impose, but to create win-wins with other individuals and come to an agreement. Exactly. A negotiated a agreement. A negotiated agreement. Yep. I need you guys to do this. I want to know what we need to do in order to help you guys if you guys help us with this. And create win-win arrangements. Exactly. Because there is nothing more powerful really in a company that when you propose up to the executive team and the other department that is going to be influenced by this has your backing already oh so wow true. so true what happens to ideas at that point oh yeah Stream they flourish line. yeah the they're, track gets fast and dry that's right they're yep. able to go forward so on the on our last ses- segment on on the back of the break we're going to look at step four and step five of how this whole this whole process works together yep all right you've been listening to team real world 107.3 fm wbrp She asked me, son, when I grow old, will you buy me a house of gold? And when your father turns to stone, will you take care of me? Welcome back to the Team Real World Radio Show, where we discuss real problems, real solutions, and we make it really fun. All right. uh, Great song. Yeah. Really good song. Yeah. Uh... All right, so I think we spent a good bit amount of time because we're going to expound this on our our, our next radio show. Correct. Okay, but since this, this is our last segment, we should go ahead and wrap up and clarify what the four steps are. Yeah. Okay. But I like something before we get into a step four and step five. I liked something that we we ended our last show with, our last segment was, and that is when ideas are not presented well, mm. and ideas problems. Okay. Yeah. Solutions are not handled well. What happens to those ideas? Oh, they just they they either they either die a tragic death or they just sit in a corner waiting for someone to represent. Them. So big picture. I like everybody to think of this big picture in an environment when I where ideas are not possible. Innovation breaks down. Mm-hmm. Creativity breaks down. People's interest and engagement drops. Yeah. Okay, that's what's at stake. Yep. Okay. Uh, on next week's show, we'll talk about how uh, the population out there and the different generational 
mixtures in the workplace present a challenge to that just by just by that alone. Sure. But the important thing here is that is something Steve Jobs said is that when when you don't have a good environment for good discussions of these things, then ideas die. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's that's not exactly about a hierarchy. It's about ideas. And I'll tell you, ideas always get to someone. There's always somebody to company saying, I have an idea. Yeah. There's no company while out there where people somewhere in there, somebody isn't saying that. How you can tell if it's really about hierarchy is it's not about the idea. It's about whose idea it is. And allowing for ideas to not be yours. Right. Managers, your role in order to become ex- excellent leaders in management is for you not to be so focused on creating the ideas. Yes. Okay. Or being the one that gets the credit for the ideas. Oh, that's just so true. Okay. Your biggest impact in your company and in your career is being one of those managers. If you have to be the leader, then be the leader, but at least be one of those managers that protects the process. Absolutely. The, Absolutely. the process by which ideas are possible. Yep. And so, yeah, you say, oh, hey, but what's the process? Well, that's what we're going over this program. Yeah. Okay. The process is simple, but it's got a lot of multi layered imp- applications. Step number one, every manager needs to be able to tap down. Yep. Go find out what are the issues, what are the problems, what are the ideas, what are the solutions that the that the frontliners and the clients are saying need to be started, need to be stopped, or what needs to be continued. Right. That's step number one. And it's especially with regard to their specific work. Exactly. And I mean, let them may, say anything. They may have some opinion about the executives. But eh. That's okay. And don't, I'm yeah. not saying shut them up, but what, specifically when they're saying, when I'm working, I don't have this tool. That's right. When I'm working, I have this interruption. The, the, the question is, is what real world, what real life stuff you need right now or in the next three, four, five months? Yep. Okay. Number two, tap into yourself. Organizational speaking, uh, time management, then tap across to your team members across different silos you yep. know, and create a conversation of those collected ideas so you can then take step number four. But taking step number four it's not an issue of one manager going up or two men. It's the ability of the managers as a team, as a whole, being able to speak to the executive team as a team. Correct. Because there are many issues that impact across the company that all of them need to learn to speak as one voice. And like you said earlier, if, if three departments need to get together on an issue and not, and not bring in the other departments, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, there's many scenarios of that. Sure. But how many times really do, do those other three departments yeah. don't need to know about well, it? Well, and sometimes we assume the other department doesn't have a stake in it, and it turns out, oh, yeah, finance does want to know how we're doing POs over here in right. operations. And even just, hey, that it's coming out of the pipeline. Yeah. And you don't want to yeah. hear about it from, oh, did you hear, you know, yeah. by the way. So the next step, step number four, is the ability for managers to know how to tap up, mm-hmm. how to take those ideas, those issues, make them into ex- excellently well-executed or presented proposals. Yeah, a business case. That's right. Uh, yeah. So exactly. the drama of how the issues are communicated is okay at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And see, this is where the managers get it backwards. Yeah. They want their people to learn how to complain professionally. Well, they would as soon as you learn how to propose professionally. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you that know? is exactly right. But the right. reason why they just feel they have to get all dramatic about it is because it go- it doesn't go anywhere. That's right. They didn't start dramatic. No, they it just de- get but it became. Because, you inherited right. that culture. So yep. step number four is the ability for managers to present proposals and recommendations and action plans and, in a professional manner, in a convincing manner. Yes. It's about convincing, persuaded. And if you're rejected, it's what one of my best managers told me. Repackage that thing and sell it again. Yeah. And if it's good enough to be rejected once, it's good enough for you to be rejected <laughs> twice. You know? That's right. And then just That sounds like me in high school in the prom I, somehow. I yeah, know. right. It's kind of like Tommy Boy where what's his Chris Farley goes to his first client and you want these break pads? No. Okay. And he leaves. Yeah. <laughs> That's how most of us, yeah. you know, and so uh, step number four is how to present and, and how again, to propose. He, feel how different that is from a stance from a manager saying to an executive, so what do you want me to do? Oh, Feel how different that is. Uh, so, so just like we said, there's three things tapping down. Ideas, solutions, uh, uh, problems, uh, solutions, and ideas, yes. right? When you tap into yourself, it's your time management, your organizational skills, and coming up with a game plan 
that you should revisit every 30 days for a 90 day game plan, right? Yep. The yep. three things that you should be tapping across to your fellow team members, to your fellow managers is one, what did you guys find out in your tapping? Yeah. <laughs> you know, two, what do we prioritize? Mm -hmm. And three, what do we escalate? Yep. All right. Those yep. are the three things. When you get to step four, there's also three things. All right. Presentations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or proposals. Yeah. All right. Presentations, proposals, and reports. Oh, yes. Managers hate to report. Yeah. Okay, I don't have anything to propose, but I tell you, you always have something to report. Yep. And if you don't quickly come up with a report to show your executives or the supervisors above you what you're accomplishing on a week to week basis, you're going to beg the question from them that you never want your supervisor to ask us. And that is what? Do they know what they're doing? Are they doing or, anything? Yeah. Hey, tell me what's going on. Yeah. Hey. What's been what's been happening? Yep. Anytime a manager, supervisor, executive asks that question, guess what you haven't been doing? Letting them know what's going on. You haven't been reporting. Yep. All right. So we'll cover this more in the next show. Step number five. Once you've tapped down, once you've tapped into yourself, once you've tapped across, once you've tapped up because you're now presenting, you're you're making proposals mm -hmm. and you're reporting, then what do you do? You come up with action items. Right. Okay, you get approvals from your executives and then you implement. If you think of it this way, when you get that green light from the executive, that's got to now get converted into action. Into work. actions. Right. And the reason one of the main reasons why executives do not like to hear from managers about their ideas is because, first of all, they're not presented well. Mm -hmm. There's not a real game plan. OK, yeah. but here's the here's the bigger. Here's the biggest one that last time I said do it and it still did not get done. Yeah, yes. Okay, so <laughs> yes. that idea that went all the way to the top did not produce the fruit of the idea. So whenever we're talking about ideas being protected, we're not talking about ideas that pop up in one's head. Yeah, Ideas are those ideas that are gathered from the bottom, okay, that are nurtured by your organization, mm -hmm. that are nurtured through cross-departmental alignment mm -hmm. that are then further nurtured and watered by making a good proposal of this idea to the executives. And when you get a green light to go, then it's that idea followed through to our accountability and productivity. Oh yeah. That, that, that circle right there, that rhythm yeah. is what we normally work with managers and ask them. So tell me, what are your challenges as a manager? And they start telling us, yeah. well, man, my challenge is here. And we normally say, all right, well, let's go through the five steps yeah. and let's figure out which one of these major steps are you good at and what are you not good at? And when we can help managers across companies do this as a team, man, the yeah. possibilities are endless. Absolutely. Why? Because staff members know all they have to do is what? Speak, Speak up. Speak up. And Speak all up. a manager has to do to fix something with sales is do what? Tap across. Speak up and tap yep. across. And if I'm an executive and I know that my managers are talking and I want to go and bring this company in a different direction, what's all that I have to do? Speak up. That's right. So what this this program, this 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 approach to excellence in management is to create leaders who love to create a rhythm and a process of communication. Yep. All right. Uh, let me recommend you grab this recording from our website. Listen to it with your managers. Yes. Write those down and ask yourself the tough question. What what steps are we good at and what steps are we not good at? Absolutely. Whatever you do, do not make it complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that complicated. That's right. We uncomplicate things at Team Real World. All right. <laughs> great being with you guys. Yeah. John, great absolutely. show. Yeah, likewise. Great show. All right. Thank you for joining us in Team Real World. And you've been listening to Talk 107.3. FM WBRP.